In our first oscilloscope project, we just looked at the basic information that a scope provides. We also used very slowly changing signals to get a feeling for the controls. Unfortunately, this isn't a very useful way to acquire most of the data which electrical engineers work with. In the real world, electrical signals change quickly. Signals in the kilohertz to megahertz range are the norm rather than the exception. So if we want to visualize the data, we need to use extremely small time scales on the order of thousandths to millionths of a second. There's no way a human can process data that's streaming by at that rate, so we use something called triggering to help us make sense of the data. At low time bases, oscilloscopes show one window's worth of data at a time. This signal, for example, has a period on the order of a few milliseconds. If we want to see any detail about this signal at all, we'll need to display something like a millisecond of data at a time. These one millisecond chunks of data that are displayed appear as a set of successive snapshots of the data, like the frames of a movie. Suppose these snapshots of data are chosen at some arbitrary interval, like we've shown here. These successive snapshots are not consistent and are probably flashing by at an extremely high rate. So it would be impossible for any human to look at this information and get any useful information out of it. We'll just see a flickering jumble of lines. What we can do is choose our snapshots of data so that some feature on the data lines up at the same point in all the snapshots. This feature is called a trigger point. So now let's look at what happens if we acquire our data based on some trigger point. In the example shown here, we're triggering, that is beginning data acquisition, based on the value of the signal being here and the slope of the signal being positive. Now all the frames of our movie look the same. So if we successively flash these frames in front of a person, it will appear that the waveform is frozen and we can read the data we need at our leisure. This approach works best, of course, for periodic signals. We'll discuss using triggering to display and freeze non-periodic signals in a later project on single sequence acquisition. To show an example of triggering in action, we'll use a similar circuit to the one we used in our first oscilloscope tutorial project. The only difference is that we're using channel one of the waveform generator to apply a time varying voltage to the circuit rather than manually turning the power on and off. Here's the circuit from our first oscilloscope tutorial project. We can just disconnect the V plus connection and replace it with a connection to channel one, the yellow wire on our flywire connector. We'll use the WaveGen instrument to apply a low frequency triangular voltage wave to the circuit. Let's make the frequency of the triangular wave 13 hertz and its amplitude 4 volts. Click on Run AWG1 to apply power to the circuit. As expected, the diode lights up when the voltage across the diode exceeds about 2 volts. This condition occurs 13 times per second. Now let's use our oscilloscope to display the resistor and diode voltages. The first thing I'll do for this demonstration is to return the scope display to its default settings. That will make sure that what I'm doing will correspond with what you see. I'll also turn off the tips. Those can be distracting. If you've been playing around with the scope already, which I sincerely hope you've been doing, you may want to restore the default settings too. First, let's take a look at how the display looks when we don't use triggering. Under Mode, set None. In order to start acquiring and displaying data, click on the Run button on the oscilloscope window. Notice that our time scale, at least, isn't well suited to the data we're collecting. We're only seeing 10 milliseconds, or 1 one hundredth of a second worth of data on the screen at a time. Since the waveform we're applying to it is changing pretty slowly, we're seeing only a small portion of the waveform in the screen at any given time. The overall effect is that we're seeing a series of sequential snapshots of the data. We can control the time axis with the time control box on the right side of the window. 100 milliseconds per division, for example, provides a pretty good representation of the signal without taking too long to fill up the screen. This looks reasonably good, but we can't see much detail about the waveform. If we try to zoom in on it by decreasing the time base, the waveform goes back to being really jumpy and hard to read. Let's use a trigger to display the data. As we mentioned before, a typical trigger point is defined by a voltage level and a slope condition. The voltage level is fairly self-explanatory. 
It's simply the value of voltage at which the trigger condition occurs. The slope condition defines whether the trigger point is set based on the signal increasing, called a rising edge trigger, or decreasing, called a falling edge trigger. The trigger source also needs to be defined. This is often set to be one of the data sources, either channel 1 or channel 2. To apply our trigger, change the mode to normal. By default, channel 1 is used as the trigger source. The trigger level is 0 volts, and the trigger condition is on the rising edge. Where this set of conditions is satisfied lines up with 0 time. If we change the trigger level to 1 volt and the trigger condition to falling, that feature, a 1 volt level while the voltage is decreasing, now lines up with time t equals 0 on the main window. Every frame of data lines these points up at zero. Since the signal repeats itself at regular intervals, the successive frames give the impression that the waveform isn't changing at all. Now it's easy to make our measurements. We can also change our trigger level by clicking and dragging the triangle at the right of the screen, and we can change the location of zero time by clicking and dragging on the black triangle at the top of the screen.